Jason Ryan Dorsey, the Gen Y guy, is a best-selling author and acclaimed speaker. He has appeared on 60 Minutes, 2020, The Today Show, The View, and in Fortune Magazine. Gen Y's spending power this year is 200 billion with a B. But I want to add some urgency to that number. In 2017, Gen Y is predicted to outspend baby boomers, and it goes like this. We are just starting to exert our spending influence. And I'm going to argue for your purposes, when you think about the lifetime value of a client, Gen Y brings more value than any generation that you're working with. Not just because we're connected, but our spending power is only going to grow. Put all that together, we are a huge and critical opportunity for you to address. Most important factor that shapes generations, all of you deal with this, parenting trends. How you are raised is the greatest indicator of what you will go on to do in the workplace, and especially for you guys, the marketplace. Gen Y, my generation, our parents are mainly baby boomers. And baby boomers have a distinct parenting philosophy which has absolutely come back to haunt them. Where are my boomers? I know you're in here, born between 46 and 64. Raise your hand real high. There we go, there we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All of you who just raised your hands, promise me you won't retire. <laughs> Please, we need you so bad. <laughs> you have all kinds of skills my generation doesn't have. My favorite, long division. <laughs> Gen Y is not tech savvy. The perception comes from the idea that we have our cell phones with us everywhere we go. And we're constantly connected to technology. Our research shows Gen Y is not tech savvy. What we actually are, we are tech dependent. And there's an important distinction. We do not know how technology works. We just know we can't live without it. It has completely changed one thing above all else, and that is our communication skills, or lack thereof. It's a great observation. The flip side is, Gen Y looks at how other people communicate and think they don't have good communication skills. It's all perception. People above the age of 35 think communication skills are in person. Gen Y has a very different view. How tech dependent is Gen Y? I was speaking to a bunch of university presidents and asked them, what are you doing to get Gen Y to want to enroll in your university? And one of them says, Jason, Jason, Jason. We are heavily promoting our new washing machines in the student dorm rooms. I said, what are you talking about? He says, no, 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 you don't understand. Our new machines, when your laundry's done, the machine sends you a text message. Genius! Right? I mean, if only we did our own laundry. <laughs> it's tech dependent. And that tech dependence has come at a cost, which you spoke to, and that is our communication skills. The best example I know is you call Gen Y five times. Ring, 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 ring. No answer. You send a text. Boom. Instant reply. And we're driving. <laughs> and look, I'm going to admit, I'm, I'm going I'm to own up to something. I made a mistake. I taught my mama how to text message. My mama sends the longest text messages <laughs> on earth. I finally asked, I said, Mama, if I have to scroll, it's not a text message. <laughs> You've got to stay in touch with Gen Y based on our communication preferences. In the workplace, you can expect us to move towards you. In the marketplace, it's not going to happen because it's all about us. That's how Gen Y thinks, and you can make this work. Gen Y, when we've interviewed them, they have three different preferences on how we like to buy. These are the top three ways that we want communication from you before and after we've had a customer experience. I'm going to give them to you in order. Gen Y's most preferred method of communication is when Gen Y shows up in your office, you absolutely have to make it memorable. The way you make it a memorable experience, because customer experience is what we study by generation, this is what Gen Y wants. We want to show up in your office. First of all, we don't want to be there. But when you get us to come there, we want you to walk us around your office and introduce us to every other person on your team. You do that because you then say, 
When you work with us, you don't just get me, you get my entire team. Other generations are turned off by that. They don't want to go around and meet other people. Gen Y, we love it because we feel VIP. We just got past the velvet ropes. Every one of us in this room right now, from youngest to oldest, has a different relationship with technology that is largely driven by our age, and I'm going to prove it right this second. Who in here remembers a computer that took punch cards? Raise your hand. Who has no idea what I'm talking about? Where's my people? There you go. Who in here has been working so long that you remember using a ditto machine, like a mimeograph? Raise your hand. What'd you do with those? You cranked it right, and then when the paper came off, <laughs> the purple paper. <laughs> Look, she's having a flashback. <laughs> I love all the young people looking around. They're like, why is that dude smelling the paper? <laughs> Email doesn't smell. <laughs> Most important thing when you think about Gen Y as a buyer, to get into Gen Y's mindset as a buyer, the most important thing you need to know is this tagline, and this tagline should be your brand. And that brand is... Every Gen Y you meet believes they're unique. We believe we're special. We need to know that the experience you're going to give us is based on that uniqueness. And the way you do that is... Help me out. Boomer, help me out one more time. Back when you were in school, if you got in trouble at school, oh, that was nothing. That was nothing compared to what the people who loved you were going to do in the privacy of their home. Remember this? We do not hit... Where does he learn this? <laughs> Gen Y, we get in trouble at school. They call us to the office. We're texting our mom. Mom, bring the attorney. I'm going in. <laughs> Here's what's often overlooked. Gen Y feels entitled because we've been saved by our parents. When we look at generations and you're trying to find best practices across them, the role geography plays in shaping that generation is critical to understanding how to engage them. For your purposes, since we have great representation geographically, you will see differences in this room based on people who grew up out in the city versus people who grew up out in the country like I did versus people who grew up overseas. You'll see this with your clients. You'll see it with your teammates. I grew up out in the country. Who in here is from a small town? Anybody? Come on. Where's my people? There you go. There you go. Who's ever walked into a Walmart and had a spontaneous reunion? <laughs> right? There you go. I mean, that's how I was raised. My best friend is from the Bronx. His high school graduating class had students from 40 different countries in his high school class. He could walk down the street, hear multiple languages spoken, eat at any restaurant imaginable. He had mass transit. Okay, where I'm from, that's a piggyback ride. <laughs> he and I are almost identical in age, yet we have some different views of the world based on where we grew up. You'll see differences between urban and rural, and people raised in the U.S. and North America, and people raised outside the U.S. I work a lot overseas. I know many of you in here have clients who are overseas. One of the largest employers in Norway calls me up, the CEO. Jason, we need you. Our Gen Wires are driving us crazy. Their pants are falling off. They have an earring in their nose. They call me by my first name. <laughs> They're just like you. <laughs> so I said, well, I'll help you out. So I fly over to Norway, and I'm a data person. You'll hear me talk a lot about data. I'm a data person, but data only gets you so far. If you really want to put the data in context, you've got to show up and hang out. So I show up in Oslo, and I'm at lunch. My server, she's about 24 years old, so I ask her, how do you like working here in Oslo? Do you, do you like it or the environment? And she's like, yeah. She said, oh, it's okay. She just started working in the restaurant, so they started her low at $22 an hour. She got three weeks paid vacation upon accepting the job. She gets a fourth week if she makes it a year, and if it doesn't work out, she still has full health coverage for free for the rest of her life. Yeah, 
are some similarities. <laughs> I don't know what they are. My point is she and I, again, are in the same generation, yet we have a fundamentally different view of the employer-employee relationship. Here's what I want you to leave with. Next to that definition, please write this down, and this is the heart of what we're going to talk about today. When we talk about generations, they're not a box that all of you in here, including myself, will fit neatly inside based on your birth year. doesn't work that way. You actually can end up turning people off. But what generations absolutely are is they're powerful clues, really powerful clues, on where to start to better connect with and influence other people of different ages. It's true whether the people are older or whether they're younger. And what makes them powerful and predictive, what is the absolute best day to build generalized loyalty to you, whether or not we've bought from you? What is the absolute best day of the year? Birthday, Birthday. yes! That is our national holiday. <laughs> and we don't just have a birthday, do we? Oh, no, birthday weekend, birthday week, right? Birthday month? <laughs> it's not May, it's Jason month. <laughs> the way we know that you know it's our birthday, and this is, the, this is where it gets really good. Facebook is it, but here's what you got to do. You've got to get us at 12.01. Real friends Facebook you at 12.01. Or they text you at 12.01. There's a competition. If you're in here and you're under 35, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I love it because I travel all the time. So I get them three hours early. Ha ha, I'm on the East Coast. Right? You've got to get them on their birthday. That is the key day for us. So don't sell us anything. Don't offer anything. Just say, saw it's your birthday. Hope you have a great one. What you just saw was part of a custom keynote presentation. And I customized that presentation for a specific industry. For your event, I'd work with you to do the same thing. We'd customize my message specific to your audience, who's actually in the room, specific to your data. And we'll ask for lots of it. And if you have it, we'll use all of it. And specific to your priority outcomes. Our favorite outcomes are outcomes that are measurable. The result is when people leave that room after my presentation, they will truly feel like the message was just for them. Because with your help, it was.